I am now delighted to announce um, Chief Executive Steve Bagshaw <coughs> from Fujifilm Diasynth Biotechnologies based in Billingham and Steve is going to give us the perspective from the bioscience lens. So thank you and welcome. Well, thanks for the opportunity to present and showcase to you a Northeast success story, um, Fujifilm Diasynth Biotechnologies. When you're looking at a map of the world and you're looking for places that you would expect a leading biotechnology company to come from, you don't usually look for the most cooling towers. But right in the shadow of the Billingham cooling towers is this success story. And it's a real pleasure to be able to stand in a room like this and talk about it. Normally, when people ask me what I, what I do, I have to be very careful in terms of answering that question. And they imagine a party where you're stood at, and somebody comes up to you and says, so what, or usually in this sort of voice I always hope it would be, so what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, and I wake up and remember I'm still in the 50-year-old you know, something or other. Then, and I say to them, you know, drugs. <laughs> really? No. Really, but not those sort of drugs. The sort of drugs that are creating the stories that are changing people's lives. These are the sort of drugs that we're manufacturing, developing the process for and manufacturing in Billingham. We're, we're, we're putting drugs into the market that are attacking Crohn's disease. These are just a, a set of headlines from the last month around the biologics drugs, the kind of drugs that we're developing in Billingham in the northeast of England. Wow. Fujifilm Diasynth is one of the world's leading contract developers and manufacturers of biopharmaceuticals, vaccines and advanced therapies. And it's one of those stories where it's a hundred million turnover business here in the UK, about the same in the US as well, so we have a sister set of companies in the US that I run as well. We're about a, if you think about it in dollars, about $350 million turnover company, about 650 staff here on Teesside. Some of you will know that we were so big in Billingham we couldn't expand fast enough, so we've taken labs in Wilton now as well and looking to expand further. When you come down Bellasis Avenue, we think of Bio Billingham, um, and Bio Billingham has what is really Bio Bellasis Avenue because at our end of Bellasis Avenue is Fujifilm Diasynth, at the other end of Bellasis Avenue is Quorn, two of the world's leading fermentation specialists. Food at one end, drugs at the other end. Wow. In the northeast, under your watch. And inside the buildings that will still come down, you'll still come down Bellis's Avenue and go, really? Is this sort of equipment and the things that when we bring clients to our facility, they go, wow. Because they can see the track record that we've created in Billingham and they meet the staff, 650 of them, that are all looking externally at how do you attract people to come and work here. Why do people outsource? Why do people take people like us and make them their partners for life? They do it because of these numbers. For every 250 really good ideas that venture capitalists might put money into, only 10 of them make it to the point at which you would test them on humans, fit humans at phase one. Only five of those ever make it to people that are ill. Only two of them ever make it to the double blind test where the placebo and the drug are given to the doctor and the patient and neither knows which is which. Is which. Placebos are so good, 50% of those trials fail. Work that out. And then they make it to the approved drug. And so you get to the point at which we're thrilled to have made in Billingham drugs being dispensed and used in the northeast of England, in the UK and globally. It's an international business. We're regulated by the USA, we're regulated by the UK, the EMA, by Japan, by South Korea, by Turkey, by Brazil, anywhere in the modern world where drugs are being sold, we're regulated by them here in Billingham. And our customers are global. At any one time, we'll have 40 different clients working with us. We've worked with over 350 clients in the last 25 years. That, I think, Paul, is a, is a building you know well. 
Many of you in this room will know well that this is the roots of where our, build, our business came out of, ICI's active head office. And in those 70s and 80s, very prescient people were wrestling with the problems of feed, fuel and heal. How do we do that in the world going forward? And three world-beating products came out of that, uh, that facility. Protein, corn and biopol. <coughs> Only corn lives today. Protein and biopol were 25 years ahead of their time. And this is what happened to protein in 1988. In the 80s, any textbook you picked up had the northeast of England as the place to come and look at the world's largest airlift fermenter. When they started it up, Teesside actually shut down because the electricity surge was so big, it pulled Teesside down. They came up with a great problem of solving analysis, which was let's have two parts of the national grid attached whenever we start it up, and then it won't go down. And if it does, well, we'll just switch the other one on. ICI is one of those names that whenever you talk about the northeast of England, somewhere at some point in, a, in the day, someone will mention ICI. And out of those roots came our company. We became the Zeneca, we became Avicia, we went to MSD. And then in 2011, really looking, where do we go next? Out of, that, out of the blue came Fujifilm and Mitsubishi Corporation. Not quite out of the blue, we'd, we'd been courting them quite hard. But to anybody looking outside, you'd go, why on earth are they doing that? And here we are today with facilities in Billingham. And I love this slide we have everywhere because it has Billingham and then it has North Carolina and Texas. <laughs> and if those of you have ever been to Billingham, do come, by the way, if you've not been to Billingham yet, do come and look at how North Carolina and Texas and Billingham are all the same type of place. <laughs> <laughs> Fujifilm's second foundation is the story. Kodak and Fujifilm head to head in the 50s. Imagine this. Japan is being run by General MacArthur. Under General MacArthur's watch in Tokyo comes out all the old companies of Fujifilm and all the other companies. And for the next 50 years, they fight like Bilio to get themselves onto the world stage. In 2000, Fujifilm peaks at its film demand. By 2010, that 50-year fight they've had to win the film battle has completely gone. Completely gone. There is now just one factory with one line in the world making these films for professionals who still, for some reason, like to use a bit of film instead of using digital. And in 2000, they recognised, this is, this is great, but we're in trouble. Let's diversify and let's use our technology to get into other areas. And so one of the second foundations they created was healthcare. And I'm thrilled to be part of this story. Because Fujifilm, and please read this carefully, um, <laughs> made a commitment to the market that they would be a 100 billion yen player in 2023. That's $1 billion player in my business in the, in the contract development and manufacturing. They've actually since then gone a little bit crazy and said, you know, a billion looks, it looks a little bit tame. Could you get us to two by 2025? We will invest in you. We'll look to back you with mergers and acquisitions that you need to do. And we'll, we'll back your recruitment. Partner, partner, partner. Please take us there. So when you look at that story and go, wow, look at that story happening in the northeast of England, coming as I have after those two speeches that you've had about Brexit, why are we excited about being in the northeast of England? Well, the first thing is because we're here. And we have a real commitment for the next 25, 50 years to be putting biotechnology into the northeast of England. And I'm thrilled that in this room are people who have partnered us in this journey. And there are two, two organizations I want to call out, CPI and NEPIC in terms of ways in which businesses like ours are supported again and again. CPI, congratulations for getting five more years of investment, having one of the world's leading um, centers for process, um, uh, for, for really taking it on. And for us in NEPIC as well, this is a major, major source of strength that we get in this region. Please don't overlook the fact that the cluster that is the northeast of England is a huge support to us and it means that we can talk to the world with the confidence that our, ne our neighbours are with us. You'd be amazed how many people can't do that, who, get, who don't get on with their neighbours. We do. It's gorgeous. You know, you've seen the pictures already that, um, that, that from Barclays. In terms, that was a much better introduction to why would you come to the North East than, than I can give in this speech. Let me talk about children challenging industry. I'm, I love the fact that in this picture, 
Some of you know the, uh, the, the name that people call Middlesbrough from the outside. Um, well, here, these children are dressed up, not because of what Middlesbrough's doing to them, <laughs> but because we don't want them to contaminate the drugs that we're making. Isn't that an awesome change of idea? that you tell your children that your children are the dirty ones and that we want to protect the products we're making from them. We're also thrilled to be part of the graduate schemes of, the, of, of this country. There are some fabulous postdoc schemes run with, uh, with, again, with our friends at CPI and across the, across the north of England and also um, across the universities of, of the UK. I've put a picture of Morris up here. I'm sure he'd be thrilled that he's part of my speech. But Morris was the, was the mayor of Stockton last year. My owners came to um, Billingham for the opening of the, of the new laboratories. Morris turned up in robes. Can you imagine Japanese inward investors being greeted by a man in robes who's there for them? It's awesome. And he and Ben have done a superb job. And Morris represents the way Stockton and the local councils have supported us and continue to support us. They are doing a great job. Ben persuaded Theresa May to have a word with my boss last time she was in Japan. Can I tell you how much that works? Getting Theresa May or a senior politician from the UK to say, that company that you run in the Northeast, thank you. What else can we do to support you? It's awesome, the difference <coughs> that makes. Don't let anyone tell you the tax regime in this country is against investment like this. The RDEX scheme is again world leading in terms of persuading people to come and do R&D in this country. It works. And the continuing investment in things like the National Horizon Centre is what the North East is good at. Persuading people to make the national centres here and then influencing the way in which the rest of the world does it. So that's our real plus story. But right at the heart of this, the thing we've got to get over is that my boss will not yet invest in my plant in long-term manufacturing until we've given him a credible story about how we're going to get through this monumental act of self-harm, as he says, Steve, why, do, why did you let it happen? <laughs> um, okay. We also have to deal with the fact that we're not in the Golden Triangle. So when you look at the Golden Triangle and look at the investment that's going into the Golden Triangle, we have to keep doing stuff like this, telling the world that the North East is the place to come. We have been very successful in attracting people and work to come north from the Golden Triangle. But it's a continuing task that all of us need to do to make sure that in the industrial strategy it says place, keep talking about the place that is the northeast of England because naturally it's a lot easier to go here and here than it is to come here. And one of the problems in that it's easier to get there and there is the infrastructure to get here. And we as the northeast have to continue to tell the story that we need linking to the rest of the England. My Californian clients get to Heathrow and honestly they think they're getting into a horse and trap to go anywhere else outside Heathrow. They think of Britain as Greater Heathrow, Greater <laughs> London. You know, because that's what people are trying to do. They're trying to make it so that it's just, how easy can I get into England? We need to make it so that it is really easy to get north here. And it doesn't help when you have a story where people stand up in the press and say, I will link Middlesbrough to London by 2018, and I haven't seen the train yet. You know, those trains matter. And we need to be making those things happen. So there's in terms of the northeast. But where are we in terms of a, of a, of a, a supply chain? I mean, look at this business that I'm in. It's an 8% growth. Um, and that's cautious we use 8% because actually parts of it that we're in are about 11 12% growth. If you look at advanced therapies, which are the gene therapies and the cell therapies, that's like 40% per annum growth at the moment. We need to be right in the heart of that. And there's a fabulous opportunity here to build a, an ecosystem that basically gets the northeast of England and keeps it on the map. The policy structure that Greg, I'm sure, is going to talk about later has place at the heart of it. You could put a pile this big of stuff that's been written in the last three years on industrial strategy and, and the ways in which things like our business react to it. The life sciences sector deal is a really key deal for us, but so is the bioeconomy. Another completely <coughs> different speech to you people would be, back the bioeconomy for the northeast of England, because we have got many of the features in terms of ports, industry, um, trained, <coughs> trained academics, trained people, bringing that together 
The bioeconomy strategy will be launched soon. We will be a part of that. I've been privileged to chair that UK bioeconomy strategy board and it will put a story that the North East can really latch on to. It is, a, it is something that Fujifilm Dyson will be a part of for the next, as I said, 25 to 50 years here in the North East. Thrilled to be at the Prosperity Conference and thrilled to have your support as we go on. Thank you. Thank you.